Welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. We're coming to you live from Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona. Turning Point Headquarters. Turning Point Headquarters. And uh, man, what an honor. What a privilege. I got one of my favorite people on planet Earth. I actually mean that. Uh, Pastor Rob McCoy. And uh, two Californians out here in Phoenix. Yeah. And enjoying it. <laughs> and we're enjoying it. We got to tell them the secret, though. I mean, it's going to be a little post-dated, but... yeah. Oh, about what we're doing? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to the Super Bowl. Going to the Super Bowl. Pretty crazy. Pretty wild. Yeah. Your first time. I've never been to a Super Bowl before. What do you think? I'm I'm very excited. <laughs> so but but I, I wanted I Sean, I, I I wanted everyone to know how we met. Yeah. Because it I didn't know I'm I'm not a Christian music follower. Yeah. Forgive me. Uh I just never enjoyed Christian music ever since I started getting writers from some of the artists when I was a youth pastor. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought, this is the biggest joke. And uh, and so I just kind of let it go. Yeah. Um, and all my kids, my daughter's, you know, worship uh, leader, and and they love music, mm-hmm. and they, they adore you. And I'm like, I don't know who you are. You know Sean Foy, they were flipping out. Yeah. But we didn't meet through music. No. We didn't meet through even ministry. No. It was a it was it was kind of really a cool connection. Yeah. At least for me, I was blessed. Yes, by it. it was incredibly cool. I mean, it was a it was a a godsend just at the right time, you know. And uh, I'll I'll talk and then you fill in wherever. But I I met uh, Rob when I was running for Congress, and um, I didn't have a whole lot of allies or even a lot of people that a believed in. I think believed in the reason I was running and why I was doing this, most people thought it was crazy. Yeah, I'm a worship leader, a missionary. And then all of a sudden it's like in everyone's minds, it took this crazy left-hand turn or right-hand turn. <laughs> and it, it took a turn. Yeah, and and went into politics and it seemed like pretty random. And for me on my end, it wasn't actually that random because you know I was doing mission work around the world and I would just go into dark nations and places where the Lord told me to go. And so when when I gave God my yes, I gave him my yes to do anything. Amen. So to me, it wasn't weird. A lot of, to pe- a lot of people it was. You were one of the few that was like, had my back. You and Mike Huckabee, yeah, why, why, you and Governor Mike Huckabee were my two first supporters. And, and, uh, well, Shannon Grove. Shannon Grove. Senator Grove. Right. Uh, Mike, Mike was my, my kind of model, uh, a pastor yeah. who went into politics. Right. Um, and and succeeded at it. Um, I I adore that man. Yeah. And, and you know uh, he was he was the first Republican lieutenant governor elected in Arkansas since before Reconstruction. Wow. Civil War. Wow. And and uh, he had run for the Senate and had lost, and was exhausted. And the governor of the state became president. Clinton, lieutenant governor, became governor, and the seat was open for, uh, you know, a. a uh, an election for lieutenant governor, and he ran and won, and they locked him out of his office, bolted it from the inside. He had to meet in the coffee shop. It took a bunch of court orders for him to occupy the seat he was duly elected to. That is insane. And I then he got that. he got reelected by a massive and and it was it was the African American community that that had a huge part in right. electing him. And um, before he was elected, between the House and the Senate of Arkansas. Uh, I think there was less than maybe 30 uh, Republicans in a 125-seat house. Wow. When he left, having termed out as governor, it was a complete flip, and every federal seat was held by a Republican. That man single-handedly changed Changed the landscape of Arkansas. Wow. And um, and then the governor was indicted and sent to prison, so he ran for governor and won. Um, It's just an amazing story. Yeah. And there's there's always hope. Yeah. And so you and I both in California we're conservatives. It's like a California condor. Yeah. <laughs> an, endan- an endangered species, and we're Christians. And people, it's like, you're, Christians aren't supposed to be in politics. Right. And, and from from the yeah. the mindset of today. Right. Uh, it's crazy. And so when you called me, I I I I didn't even know what you looked like. I just remember talking to you on the phone. We talked for like an hour and a half. Yeah. I was just giving you what I knew about. Right. Running a campaign, yeah, a pastor that's that's also the mayor that's in politics and is kicking butt. And I was like, this is a guy I need to talk to. This is a guy that gets it, and um, it brought me so much courage. And I, you know, what's interesting is I never, 
I never had a word from the Lord or even necessarily confirmation that I was going to win or, yeah. or, or whatever. I just knew I was supposed to do this, you know? Yeah. And um, to be honest, I, now that I'm in this place where I know several members of Congress and other people, I'm like, I don't really actually want that job. It's a hard job. <laughs> I don't want that job. It's, it's I don't want that so job. It's so tough on your family. It's brutal, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I, I circle back to the fact that it was, it, you know, it was so much of your encouragement and your support that really got me through that season, and not just that season, but I feel like opened me up to like, okay, this is a whole realm that we're not really impacting. Mm. And you're a missionary in the halls of government. Yeah, and 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 it and it's so controversial and it's so polarizing, which is which is ah, really crazy. Yeah, because you go through, you know, and, and talk about how political the Bible is and how political the leaders in the Christian faith are in scripture and then throughout history right it, if if i always say if god didn't intend us to be in politics he would have never have invented marriage <laughs> because really that's true you know people think politics poly is many ticks meaning blood-sucking parasite that's not the definition of politics it, it's this idea of how do we govern ourselves in such a manner that we can live together Right, and we do politics at every level, family. Right, we do politics in a trustee meeting or a right. board meeting, an elder meeting. Right, um, why why wouldn't we engage in in the defense of the welfare of our neighbor? Right, in the public square, which is what the Greeks called the ecclesia. Right, which is what Tyndale translated right. that word Jesus used in right. Matthew sixteen eighteen as assembly. And in the King James version of the Bible, because he wanted to maintain his oligarchy, he used the word church. King right. James did. But the Lord said, "Upon this rock, I will build my ecclesia." He right. didn't use a religious term. Right. He didn't say synagogue. He didn't say temple. He 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 said ecclesia. Yeah. And and intentionally. Intentionally. Yeah. And then he and then that makes more sense because and then the gates which enslave the gates of hell will not prevail. Hell is everything God isn't. It's lies, it's deceit, right, right, it's corruption, right. it's de destruction. And and all the secular progressive left can do is deconstruct. They right. don't build. Any donkey right. can knock down a barn door, but only a carpenter can build one. Yeah. And and so for Christians to participate in the ecclesia, the public square, is critical because we're contending for the welfare of our neighbor. And you say, well, what, what's, what's that? Well, that's the two great commandments. Love the Lord your God right. with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, love your neighbors yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law of the prophets. Yeah. We're, we're to do good for our neighbors. Yeah. We're to do good to those who spitefully use us. Right. And we're to be instruments within the community. And then finally, you know, Jesus said to cause one of these little ones to stumble, it'd be better for you to have a millstone tied right. around your neck, cast in the deepest ocean. Yeah. And you're not going to contend at a school board right. meeting as a believer for the sake of the children in your right. community? Totally. And you're going to come after us because, oh, yeah. politics is dirty. Well, so is a church. I mean, we're dealing with fallen people. It's right. always going to have that totally. aspect of dirtiness to right. it. Well, I'm tired of voting for the lesser of two evils. Unless Jesus is running for office, you'll always be voting right. for the lesser right. of two evils. And and you know, it's that's just moral pietism. Right. Yeah, I, I I don't participate in that because that's beneath me. Right. You know, it's like Thurston Howell on yeah, Gilligan's yeah. Island. Yeah. He, he, you need to get in the thick yeah. of it. Or or like we discovered in 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 California and. 2020 or America, you know, you may not be interested in politics, but politics is interested in you. Yeah, yeah. And they will control your life. And I, I feel like this is actually something. And we, we, of course, we don't prep for any of this. No. This is why I love this podcast. But I, I really feel like I want to get into a few things. One, of, one of them first that's just been on my heart is this. Jesus people movement, this revival, this historic move of God that took place in California, you were growing up in it. Yeah. And um, of course, people know that when we, when we started Let Us Worship, we were on the Golden Gate Bridge. I, was, I, I really was feeling to declare a new Jesus people movement is coming, but this one's going to be different. There's something about this that's going to be different. It's going to shift and change structures. So... I know that movie, The Jesus Revolution, is coming out. I've seen it. Um, it's a great movie. It's very inspiring. Um, and, and, of course, Let Us Worship has a lot of its DNA in that gritty, on the beaches, salvations, healings, people getting baptized. You've been a part of those meetings. 
you were a part of the last. So I want to talk about what are the lessons that you learned from that past move of God and what, what wasn't a component of it where we saw lasting change? Why is California what it is today if it hosted one of the great moves of God in American history? And how do we get back to a move of God that can change culture? Well, it's you're, a big question. Yeah, it's all right. It, 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 it's, it's, a, it's pretty easy to unpack. Yeah. Um, but you, you afforded me uh, uh, an honor I'm not worthy of. I wasn't really part of the Jesus movement. I was a recipient of the blessings of the Jesus right. movement, uh, but I wasn't at Pirate's Cove. I wasn't there when the churches were packing out, but I was a part of the Calvary Chapel churches. Right. Don McClure uh, was my mentor. He was like in the thick of it right. all. So in one way, yes, I was a part of it, but not an immediate part of it. Right. But here's what what was included that that or what wasn't included in in the in the Jesus movement that is included in what we're doing, the Let Us Worship movement. I'll, I'll explain it to you. Pastor Chuck and his wife Kay. Mm-hmm. Uh, started Calvary Chapel in 1968. They had broken away from the Four Square Church. Right. And they looked out in Southern California, and in 1968, Reagan was governor of California. We had the fifth right. largest GDP. We were a completely red state. Right. We just completed the California Aqueduct, which was the greatest uh, civil engineering feat. It'd take the, the snowfall from the Sierras and bring water into the San Joaquin Valley, which is the breadbasket of America. Right. The San Joaquin Valley produces more cotton than the entire South combined. It's insane. Uh, it, 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 seriously. The resources are, are mind-blowing. Epic. Yeah. And, and we, we have a ton of oil that we don't even touch. We have, right. it, it's just, a, it's an amazing state. You can right. surf in the morning, snow ski in the afternoon, and dirt bike ride at sunset <laughs> in the desert all in one day. So, so Chuck was, was pastor uh, of, of a four-square church. He breaks away in 1968. The state of California is very conservative. Now I was born here. My father was born here. My grandfather. And... <clears throat> And here's one thing that people don't realize in 1968. In 1968, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was shot on a balcony in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. In 1968, Bobby Kennedy was shot in L.A. by Sirhan Sirhan. In 1968, we had the My Lai Massacre yeah. um, in Vietnam. We had the Tet Offensive. The following year would be the Kent State shooting where National Guardsmen would shoot university students. Yeah. And the nation was in turmoil, and they were dealing with a communist um, and, and socialist a- attempt of takeover. Mm-hmm. And, and there was a divide between the older portion of, of the country and the younger. Yeah. And then you had the, you know, the love-ins in San Francisco. Right. And young people were promised hope and change, and all, of their, all their leaders were assassinated, and they were embittered. And their, their peers are dying in villages in an Asian country that they right. can't pronounce the names of. Yeah. And then drugs kind of enter, and they check out of the church into Eastern religions and experimental drug use, and they end up awash on the shores of California, burned out, and it's the hippies. Right. And Chuck and Kay look out at the sea of humanity, and their heart breaks, and they realize that they're, that they're burned out on politics. So they avoid politics, but they do something that hadn't been done in a while. They came back to the Word of God. Right. Verse by verse, chapter by right. chapter, book by book, and then they brought into the church syncopated rhythms with Lonnie Frisbee. Right. And that was the birth of Maranatha music, which brought in the modern right. Christian music yeah, movement. Totally. And that combination, it exploded in Calvary Chapel since 1968. Here we are in 2013, or 2023, excuse me. Uh, there's, it's 10,000% growth. Yeah. And that's conversion growth, not transfer growth. Right. And there's probably 1,800 Calvary chapels around the world. Yeah. Now, of course, it's kind of split a little bit since right. Chuck died. But here's the fascinating part. The lion's share of those churches are in California. Right. South of Van Nuys to the Mexican border, there's more Calvary chapels than there are Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> so how has it affected the state of California for 50 years of preaching the gospel, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book, Harvest Crusades with Greg Laurie, just preaching the gospel, believing in the death, burial, resurrection of Christ, raise your hand if you want to receive the Lord. I mean, we're evangelistic, we throw the net out every Sunday. How has that changed the state of California? by avoiding politics, but just preaching the gospel. We no longer have the fifth largest GDP. We now have the sixth. We have the highest gas tax, sales tax, income tax, corporate tax. We lead the nation in debt. You combine the next four largest states' debt, doesn't equal the debt of California. 
We are the authors of No Fault Divorce that Reagan signed in 69, became law in yeah. 70, decimated marriage across the country. We're the authors of transgender bathroom bills and the most secular progressive sexual education, hypersexualization of our children, a curriculum that's so vile you can't read a page of it in your church. And then here's the kicker. We've aborted more children in California, estimated, than the entire population today of Canada. Because abortion was legal in California long before seven, uh, 1973. So where's the power of the gospel? Right. Wow. So then along comes wow. let us worship. Yeah. Our state has been decimated. All these Christian ministries that were birthed in California, focus on the family, uh, Campus Crusade for Christ, all these ministries move out of the state because it's becoming too liberal. Yeah. And, and here we are, you and I, we're left here. And we meet when you're running for office over the phone, but then when I'm standing in opposition to the governor when he's telling me that the church is non-essential and we remain open, I notice that you were already standing on the Golden Gate Bridge doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Who's going to stop us from worshiping God? Yeah. And that, that, that's a dynamic that didn't exist in the Jesus movement. Hmm. Because the law, Galatians 3, is a guardian, a school teacher to point us to Christ until faith comes. J. Edwin Orr, the foremost historian on revival, said that revival's like Judgment Day. There's an awakening to yeah. the law, a realization of your sin, yeah. and a crying out to God for forgiveness. The law is returning because we're seeing the decimation of our culture right. that we took for granted, thinking man's innately good. Right. So... That's the difference. So, ha so I mean, it's so much history and so much saturation of the gospel, and so many big churches and so many ministries and so. I mean, it's it's mind blowing, actually. I mean, even still, but yet such a little impact. And I think I think this is something I, 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 I and this is actually leads into why we're doing the King of the Capital tour, why we're mobilizing the church. You got to tell all. you got to tell them what that is. I mean, I know you do on your other podcast, we, but this we, is so big. No, I, yeah, I'm, and I'm so I, I want to get into that, and I want to get into the reason why we're doing this. I think I think it's important for people to understand. This is what I'm doing is trying to set the context for why is this necessary in America, right? Like yeah. these people, why is Sean and these guys got and you know we're partnering with Turning Point Faith and why why do they got to do this crazy thing go to all the capitals and uh, you know it's like people don't get it but I want to come back to the context of we've seen these moves of God that haven't moved the needle on culture mm -hmm. right how can we glean from them learn from them uh, get inspired by them but what do we need to do differently what can we do this time around yeah this is this is a war of ideology. Yeah. And, and, and God has given the church to be a beacon of liberty. Yeah. You'll know the truth. The truth will set you right. free. I've come that you might have life, life more abundant. The first 11 chapters of the book of Genesis are all political. You have the Noahic covenant that has seven terms for civil government. You also have the, nat the nature of man. He, he's creating the image of God. We're image bearers. Right. We, w we were created male and female. Wow. You know, we, we're, we, we don't worship we don't worship nature. Nature was created for us, not us for nature. Right. I mean, these are these are all right. powerful right. things. And then and then you have in the first eleven chapters of Genesis the Tower of Babel, which is a government that's established with the removal of God. Mm -hmm. They say it's a tower. It it, it could be a, a construction of of a government or. Or, or a building itself, the word is yeah. kind of obscure, but the idea is we are going to do this without God. Right. And so God creates languages and disperses them, which creates confusion for them, but clarity for him. Yeah. And so when he says in Matthew 28, go and make disciples, he doesn't just say disciples, he says disciples of all Nation. nations. Nations right. are boundaries, borders, compacts, constitutions, ideologies. You don't, you don't get a chance to share the gospel in North Korea. You, you can, but it's very limited. Right. And you've been there, yeah. but it's not like you have free reign. Yeah. It's the same in, in the 1040 window where 95% right. of the Muslim world exists. Right. Yeah. You know, folks are coming to the Lord by dreams, but it's not by evangelism with people preaching. Maybe some radio broadcasts. Right. 
But it, but that government is not sympathetic to the gospel. In America, over 80 cents in every dollar in evangelism comes from the United States of America. Yeah. Because we have a government that is sympathetic to these inalienable rights that have been given to us by God, recognizing right. that man is innately free. Right. And the laws of the wise restraints that make us free. But when we abandon the Old Testament like Andy Stanley has, when we abandon the the the, the Torah or the Pentateuch, right, yeah. and we you know, Jesus G, you know what book Jesus quoted more from than any other book in the Bible? Of the Old Testament? Isaiah. Deuteronomy. Ooh. He didn't say I've come to abolish the law, but right. to fulfill well, it. Yeah. And and so Jesus said beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And then in Mark 7 or 8, I think it was 8, he said, beware of the leaven of Herod. Yeah. And I get this all the time. Oh, that's that's politics. Pharisees were right. Sadducees were left. Herod was the king. You know, and you have different ideas in religion because the Pharisees and the Sadducees were the priestly class. In 6,000 years of recorded history... The lion's share of governments have been oligarchies, the few ruling the many. Right. And, and, and it's always done by two classes, the priest and the king. Yeah. And they, they do whatever they can to control the populace. Mm -hmm. So th the leaven isn't politics. The leaven, if you think about it, is trying to do ministry and government, civil law, apart from moral law. Yeah. We don't teach the Decalogue anymore. Yeah. We don't teach th this idea that you don't steal, you don't lie, you don't covet, right, you don't right. commit adultery, you don't take right. the name of the Lord your God in vain, you have no other gods before him, you know, you, you, you don't murder, and you go through all that. Kids understand you're accountable to God yeah. and to each other. Those are the two stations of the cross. From the moral law comes civil law. And the law is the wise restraints that will make you free free to pursue God and have a relationship with him. When you remove the moral law, which is the leaven of the Sadducees, Pharisees, and Herod, then the civil law becomes a weapon to enslave mankind yeah. and keep him from God. The moral law is critical yeah. to the beneficial purpose of the civil law. And people say you can't legislate morality. That is the stupidest statement ever to leave the lips of a human being. Every law is based on somebody's values. Right. Every law. Right. And they say, well, Christians shouldn't be in politics. Why? I mean, well, you can't legislate morality. Okay, that's just stupid. Think about what you're saying. You're just lazy. You don't want to know the issues. Right. Well, I just do yeah, the gospel. Totally, totally. I just do the gospel. Well, yeah, can gospel. you just stick to the I get this all the time. Yeah, can't you just all stick to the gospel? The time. Can't you just, you know, because we do... I mean, I'm getting ready to bring my whole family to India. I was just in Iraq. We do missions. We do. I, it's part of my life. Would you just stick to that stuff, Sean? Or just stick to worship? That's that's your. And I'm like, no, no, no. There's no separation for me. Like there is no separation. When they say that, <laughs> it's a disconnect, right? Because if the most important thing, which I believe it is, is the preaching of the gospel, the second most important thing is protecting the government that protects the preaching right. of that gospel, right? And you have to be vigilant for the sake of your neighbor. Right. You're, these kids are, are being given chemical castration, chemical drugs that are considered barbaric and inhumane right. in prisons right. for serial rapists. pedophiles yeah. and rapists. Yeah. But we're going to give them to our children so th without their parents knowing. Yeah. And you're going to remain silent? Yeah. Because you don't do... I'm sorry, you don't do what? Politics? Yeah. That's just lazy. Well, it's like it's like dualism. I mean, it's 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 a very. I mean, if I, I if I told you the amount of times I've had legitimate leaders or people that that I love, even you know, that have impacted my life, if I had the amount of times that they've come to me in the last few years and said, "Sean, this is your lane. Get back to your lane. Let's go back to your lane, man." Like. You were a, you know, worship leader. Most, you know, people loved you. You focused on the gospel. You focused on singing songs of Jesus. You focused on, and uh, this is kind of like, and I'm like, dude, I, I did not want to run for Congress. I had an encounter with the Lord, and it was very clear. Yeah, amen. That this is what I was called to do. I am in. If I didn't do that, I am in utter disobedience. And this is why I think it's important in kind of getting back to this thing about 
this, this new move of God and why we have to have people that are engaged and, and truly fulfilling the Great Commission, you know, mm-hmm. which is into all the world, all spheres, all, all places of influence, all places like we're getting ready to go to the Super Bowl, two quarterbacks uh, on, on the, you know, Mahomes on the Chiefs and Jalen Hurts on the Eagles boldly proclaim that they love Jesus, they follow Jesus, they talk about it, they're not shy about it, and the church is like, that's amazing, and I think that's amazing. But the moment someone does that in the political realm, it's like, ooh, I don't know. What are their intentions? Who who knows? Ooh, we don't we don't really they're they're just using Jesus to, you know, it's it's insane. I mean, I was in the rotunda in the US Capitol, on the floor of the rotunda Come on. last week, worshiping with members of Congress that are hated by people in the church because they're Christians in government. Yeah. And yeah, they they dump on you. I you know the two quarterbacks can profess Christ. Right. Because they they've got pocketbooks and money and visibility and but the high school student who I, you just saw this in Canada and Ontario, a junior at a Catholic high school had the audacity in a Catholic high school to say there's only two genders and he's been suspended for the rest of the year. Kids going on campus wearing shirts are asked to remove them. They don't have the same freedom as these two quarterbacks do. But um, that's a result of the the unwillingness of shepherds to contend for the freedom of those kids. So how do we get back to, we want a move of God, we're leading into talking about this tour, but we we, we want to see a G, a new Jesus people movement. I believe we're, we're it's happening. We're seeing thousands and thousands of people across America a hunger like I've never experienced. Amen. But what is the how do we get people how do we get that missing element to sustain it to where it actually changes it turns from revival to reformation. Yeah, call to something that reforms society. So so the 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 return of the law not unto salvation. The the, the law doesn't save. I want to be very clear on that. The law doesn't save, it preserves. Right. And it also points us to Christ. Right. It makes us aware of our sin. Right. You you don't you know, you you don't know that 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 stick is crooked unless you hold it up to a straight stick. Right. And then you can see the bend in it. The law is a ruler. Mm-hmm. It's a guide. It's a measuring and and so we 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 combine kingdom with capital, that the civil law of our nation yeah. must result in the moral law being applied yeah, for the sake of our neighbors. And that's an awakening for them as well, because you have politicians who are now being held accountable for the moral law. Right. And, and, and the distinction is between morality and character. Uh, it was, it's been said, I think it was Edmund Burke who said, all that's necessary for evil to prosper. is good men to do nothing. Moral men moral to do men, nothing. Yeah. Morality defined. Morality is not doing what's wrong. Don't drink, smoke, or chew, or hang around with those who do. But character is different. Character is doing what's right. Right. So if your child comes home from school and says, Mommy, Daddy, all the kids in the school called Susie fat, but I didn't. And say, well, that's the moral thing to do, child. But where's your character? And she say, what do you mean? Why didn't you tell the other children to stop it? Mm. Well, they would have laughed at me. Victory is not determined by the outcome, but by the obedience. Mm-hmm. And, and be, being popular is not the only thing. Doing what, what, what God commands us to do right. is of great importance, not your likes on social media. Right. And you know... Sean, I look at you, and you're going into the the hot spots of the nation, and you're bringing in praise and worship, and you're getting blood thrown on you and fecal matter thrown on you, and yet you're watching as Antifa are converting to Christ, and and drug addicts are throwing their needles on the stage, and mm-hmm. and you're watching, you know, and you're doing baptisms right there. I mean, it's yeah. radical. I've been there. I've witnessed it. Right. And and I'm. I'm I'm not a swinging from the chandelier charismatic. <laughs> I mean, the two of us together, it's 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 an odd couple, yeah. you know. 
And yet I witnessed this. Yeah. And the pushback from the church that you would you would lead a worship service without mass when nobody's even infected. And we knew all along, but we were willing to stand for the truth regardless of the consequences. And and the loudest opposition came from the bride of Christ. Yeah. And yet we still continued because we love the bride. Yeah. She'll come around. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna provoke them, as it says in yeah. Romans eleven, to jealousy. Yeah. yeah. But John, God's used you profoundly in that capacity. Thank you. Thank you. I mean I, I want to read this quote to you by R. C. Chapman, if okay. I if I might. While you're while you're getting that, I I, I think that our vision and it's an ambitious one. Yeah. You know, it's it's ambitious. It's 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 overwhelmingly actually when you think of the cost, the time, the 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 permits, the procedures, the mobilization. I mean, you know, hitting 50 states in 2 years, we're hitting 27 this year and then 23 next year. And um a lot of them are pretty hostile, I should yeah. say, to to I mean, we had the governor of Mississippi. Obviously, Mississippi's a red state, and they, they, they're, they're down with us coming. But it, the governor told our team, hey, by the way, we had a drive-by shooting here. Like, I don't know if y'all want to meet at the Capitol. We're like, no, no. That's where we're going. Yeah, Like, man. that, we have to, it's, there's a, it's almost like I tell people, what gets me excited about it is actually very Davidic. It's like this, David had this calling. We want to usher in God's presence in his in, in in his favor and his wisdom and his guidance and honor him in the most important place of government right that was david's whole thing yeah. when he danced around in his underwear we won't do that at on the tour I'm keep out. your clothes I'm out. on I'm out. <laughs> but he did that in the capital city in the capital in front of the whole nation as a sign to say i will be even more indignified you know there's a davidic thing about ushering in the presence of god that's what i'm so excited about i can't wait to see when we go into some of these places and we've, we've done this in in some cities already across america like we did it in sacramento we had ten thousand people there we've done it in baton rouge we had thousands of people there but Every single state going in to Olympia, Washington, to Salem, yeah. Oregon, to Albany, New York, and saying the presence of God and worship to King Jesus, this is going to be the center. This is going to be the focus. All right. I want to, I'll read this quote to you in a second, but I wanted to share this with you that um, as a Calvary Chapel pastor, yeah. and I, I affiliate with you, yeah. I come to your events theologically. Um, the, the world you came from, Bethel and, and the like, we're different theologically. Yeah. And I, I get removed from speaking opportunities within Calvary Chapel because they say I affiliate with, with you and others that are not... <laughs> it's, seriously, it's just... It's crazy to me. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I'd affiliate with you at these events, but you're not there. Yeah. John, you, you, you epitomize... God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of yeah. power, love, and a sound mind. There, I, I, I see you in the most frightening of circumstances. And you're, there's a joy. You're like laughing in the middle of it. I'm like, this guy's either got a couple of screws loose me. screws, or <laughs> he has really comprehended that he's immortal until God's done with him. Yeah. Wow. Um, what is most precious in the sight of God is often least noticed by men. Excuse me. It's often least noted by men. And so um, I, I think that's, that's true. Mm -hmm. God values what you're doing. But men who run churches, not ecclesia, participate, men who run buildings, budgets, and baptisms right. um, find you difficult or problematic. Yeah. Because they have to, they have to either say you're a heretic, or they have to agree. It's it's like when my dad came to Christ, he was really difficult and and was he really hard on me. He's heavy, and my mom said he has he was he's that way to you because if what you believe is real, he he wants to know that that the more he pushes you the more it still stays strong. And if it's true, he'll, he'll come. Yeah. 
Right. And he did. He came to Christ. Yeah. Wow. And I, I'm believing that these pastors, they're not my enemy. Right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm beyond... That, that's immaturity on my part to consider them my enemy. Right. Their ideology is, but not them. They're, they're the opportunity. Right. And I, I'm, I'm believing and asking God that they would be like Martin Niemöller in Germany, you know, 1939 to 1945. Niemöller was a leftist kind of pastor yeah. that, that saw what happened when the church kind of didn't contend with an aggressive government. Right. Yeah. And he changed. He's the yeah. one who said, they came after the communists, I wasn't one, so I said nothing. Right. They came after the socialists, I wasn't one, so I said nothing. And then they came after me and there was no one left. Yeah. And he, he sided with Dietrich Bonhoeffer and, right. and he, he turned, he changed. Yeah. And I'm believing that for the pastors yeah. in America. Yeah. Even the younger guys that yeah. were indoctrinated in high school with this critical race theory right. and, and, and they're trying to marry it with the gospel yeah. and, be, and they, it's tragic, but I well, believe and, and I think I, I, you know, I think this, even this tour, this, this collab, this, uh, agenda which we have people like we don't have an agenda oh we have an agenda yeah we want the kingdom of god that's right to take over we it's a clear agenda from heaven um but i think this gives people an opportunity now i get to go to uh churches communities cities where people you know they 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 kind of some people feel bad about how they respond in the pandemic now that all the conspiracy theories have been proven true yeah <laughs> and we know what we know, and the CDC lied, and the government was in on it, and it, you know, some churches, pastors were in on it, which is sad. But now that we know what we know, we have an opportunity to say, okay, you know what? You, you tricked me once. It's not going to happen again. Yeah. I'm not going to respond. I'm going to respond differently. We can take an inventory for what we did in that season and say we're not going to do that again. And I, to me, it's a clean slate. Yeah, 2023 is a clean slate. Who's ready to roll? Let's see God's kingdom invade these capital cities. Let's see the tide that. turn in America. Let, we can bury the past. That's cool. I'm not going to shame anybody for their Amen. response. But if you're not on board after we've seen what we've seen, what, what, I what, don't know how you're going to get there. Yeah, what, else, what other evidence do you need? I, don't, I have no idea. The, 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 the collaboration between Let Us Worship and TPUSA Faith, and we don't say Turning Point Faith because we want to honor Dr. David Jeremiah, who's yeah. Turning Point, and he's been doing a show. So when we went into the faith realm, we just call it TPUSA Faith, yeah. out of respect for a man yeah. who's been doing this a long time. We really right. care about him. So um, the, the the neat combination yeah. with these two organizations right. is especially, and I want them, they're, they're going to, uh, we'll give them a front row seat any pastors out there that didn't do it right the first time around, but they're saying, you know what, we want to do it right. right. We want to have yeah. an impact yeah. in our state yeah. capital totally. and, and in the ecclesia. Yes. I get it now. I, I my my pride is I, I've checked it. I've humbled myself, and yeah. we want you to come. You are right. we, and and if and if you're in opposition to us, you come and see what it's about. Right. Yeah. And and that's the beauty of it because we've got our TPUSA faith reps that are trying to get pastors, not not bringing T, TPUSA into the church or the church into TPUSA. We just recognize that the church and pastors are the beacons of liberty. Right. So we lay out a buffet line for them to establish that in their congregations and in right. their community to be effective right. yeah. in, in being in that ecclesia and, and making an impact with yeah. the moral law and civil law. Right. And so we do biblical citizenship classes. We right. do uh, poll watching training to protect right. the vote. We do... Um, we, we call it sheepdog training, where anyone who swears to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, whether they're military, police officers, or elected officials, we teach them what's in the Constitution. How do you defend something you don't know anything about? So we, we provide this buffet line for pastors, and to each is given a measure of faith. We do pastor summits. We have all kinds of things available mm -hmm. to them. They can go down the buffet line and pick one, pick none, but just see what's available. They can pick them all. Mm -hmm. They can do tur Turning Point Academy, where... Uh, their congregants can educate their children apart from the public schools right. for fifteen hundred dollars a year. Yeah, and so when we partnered with Let Us Worship, yeah, the beauty of it is every pastor worth his his weight in salt, you know, or gold, I would say, but you know, salt was valuable, but worth their weight in gold. They're going to come to these events because they they love their neighbor and right. they love the state where God has placed yeah. them. 
and and they want to usher in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. And so we're we're there yeah. saying, this is what we want. We want you free to do what right. you do. Right. And we're here, along with Let Us Worship, to provide everything necessary to make this state awaken. Yeah. To the power of God. And 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 and. A, 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 an enormous display of of, of church unity, yep. the, the 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 vastness and the and the beauty and the and the uniqueness of the church and all of its different facets and its weirdness, which I like. And but but also putting the state in the capital city and the government on notice. Yep. Hey, listen, this is a new day. We we aware this is a post row era. We're fighting for life. We're fighting for education. We're fighting for religious liberty. We're fighting for all this stuff, right? But we're also putting you on notice. In this building, we are paying attention. That's right. And, and, Ephesians, and no but, longer are you going to be able to. And this is the powers and principalities, amen. right? It's powers and principalities. We're putting you on notice. We are looking now. We're aware of what's happening in this building. A lot of pastors don't know the craziness that is coming out of their capital city. Yeah. And it's and it's and it's destructive. It's destroying families, it's destroying kids, it's destroying, you know, the economy. It's like it's corrupt. And so we want us we want not only to gather together and to usher the presence of God into the state and and build an altar of worship, which is so powerful in and of itself. But the sustaining element behind it in my opinion, this is where the partnership is really great is saying, hey, by the way, we're going to be gone to another capital tomorrow, but we got a group of pastors and leaders and people, yeah. they're here. Yeah, They're paying attention. They're putting you on notice. This is a new day, you know? There's the, accountability. The, the unity, so when, when we expose their evil deeds as Ephesians and, yeah. and we're battling against principalities and powers of, you know, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. Right. And so we recognize that, and we come in there, and, and you, you you see these strongholds broken, but the unity is yeah. is interesting because when you put a room full of pastors together, it's the porcupine theory. They're like, yeah, you got a lot of great points, just keep them away from me. <laughs> and and pastors are by nature insecure. God takes Rob's the foolish things of the jokes. yeah, God takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wisdom of the wise. So he he takes pastors who you know maybe we got father issues or we got you know we we need affirmation and 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 the attrition rate in ministry is awful it's bad yeah, yeah. like they're one fifth survive after right. five years it's just terrible right and 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 so pastors by nature are hard to to bring together in unity but the one element we possess where you have a five point Calvinist, the swinging from the chandelier, charismatic, and all points in between. I guess I don't know if that's, you know, the, the best curve I can give. But the one thing that unifies us, if we don't get liberty right, yeah, we're going to be arguing our theological differences in prison. Yeah, and we're coming together. Yeah, for the freedom. Come on. To pursue God. Come on. Can we not agree on that? Yeah, exactly. And just for, for that day. Yeah. People will worship him. Some, it, it, it's kind of like when Michelle was giving birth. She always gave birth to big babies, nine pounders. Mikey, our last one, 10 pounds. The kid came out with his own zip code. She, <laughs> she was amazing. She would just, she would focus, close her eyes. She would be intense, but she'd make very little sound. And in the room next, this woman is screaming and she's, you know, making noise. It sounds like some animals being massacred in there. <laughs> and, the, and the Lord showed me. When when you're birthing some some uh, you know a child or or the church is giving birth to freedom, labor and delivery is going to be different for people. Yeah, yeah, totally. For for me, totally. I'm I'm not a yelling, right. screaming, yeah. and for others it is. Right. But I'm I'm with you. Yeah. Totally. I'm in. You're in the room right next door, yeah. and we're both part of that. of bringing life. Yes. So I. That was a picture God gave me. I love that. And I, I and we want to encourage, you know, in closing here, we want to encourage everybody, like, join this. Join this. It's going to be historic. Yeah. Um, I feel so much expectation in my heart. And, and, and not even just expectation. It's not like, oh, this is a good idea. It'll be really fun. I actually feel an urgency. Yeah. Like, I feel the fear of God. Like, if we don't turn this thing around... We're in trouble. ...in this country... Like, if we don't see Gen Z get radically and fall radically in love with Jesus and detach from the, the snares of the world, if we don't see the church rise up in boldness and courage, like we are, we're in trouble. And so I, 
I feel like when, when we're doing this tour, like I'm, I'm going to bring my kids on a, a part of it because they're the reason why I'm doing this. Like it's, it's for their generation. You can go to kingdomtothecapital.com, kingdom to the capital with an O, and um, find the, the first cities we're coming to. We have the first nine already published. Uh, let's see if I can go by memory. Uh, we're starting in, in March, and we're going Baton Rouge, Jackson, Mississippi, Montgomery, Alabama. Then we're coming in the next weekend, and we're going to do uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, Nashville, Tennessee, Jefferson City, Missouri. Then we're going to come two weeks later. Oklahoma. And we're going to do Oklahoma City. Texas. De Austin, Texas, and Topeka, Kansas. And we'll that's the first nine. We will keep unveiling. Don't know, forget Madison, Wisconsin. I was just there. They are so excited about you guys uh, coming. We're going to do Madison, Wisconsin. That's, that place, that's for sure. It's yeah. going to be awesome. So we're, we'll, we'll be releasing new dates uh, You know, every few weeks. Stay in touch. Go to that website. Sign up uh, to... You know, to get the latest info, and if you want to be a part of helping in your city and being being connected, we need volunteers. We need people to help us mobilize, and we're excited. And Rob, you're going to come on our tour bus. Woo -woo. We're going to have a party. Yeah, we're going to. So have a blast. we will see you guys in these capital cities. God bless. Thanks for tuning in. Have an amazing day.